Okay, first things first, Arthur Weasley is a Time Lord. It's canon. No arguing! Because the Anglia is bigger on the inside. Happy Tuesday, Potterheads! Today we're talking about all the bad decisions that Harry and Ron make in this chapter, which are all stereotypically Gryffindor, and why Snape was technically right. Well, I mean, okay, he wasn't right, but technically... Whatever. Recap, please! Summer comes to an end, and Harry and the Weasleys head to King's Cross. Arthur has enlarged the inside of the car to fit everyone without telling Molly. They get to King's Cross, and everyone can get through the barrier onto platform nine and three quarters except for Harry and Ron. They try again, but still can't get through. And a lot of muggles start noticing them, so Harry and Ron decide to wait by the car. Ron gets the idea for them to fly the car to Hogwarts so they won't be late. They steal the car and hit the invisibility booster, but a couple minutes later, the invisibility fails. So they fly up above the clouds and think they're geniuses. Several hours later, the car starts having problems and begins to crash right as they're getting to Hogwarts. The car crashes right into a giant tree and Ron's wand breaks in the process. Then the tree starts pummeling them. The car spits the boys out and drives off. They head up to the castle and notice the feast has already started. Then they get caught by Snape. Snape takes them up to his office, then goes to get McGonagall and Dumbledore. They both are sure they'll be expelled, but McGonagall just gives them detention. They eat in Snape's office and head up to the Gryffindor common room where they're greeted like heroes. Thank you, Recap. If this is your first book club video, welcome. Please consider subscribing so that you don't miss a single chapter as we read the entire Harry Potter series together. And after you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so that you always know when a new video has been uploaded. Harry and Ron make a lot of bad decisions in this chapter. Like, a lot of bad decisions. Like, how can anyone make so many bad decisions? And I'd like to start off by pointing out a failing in my own house members. This is exactly the kind of situation that gets Gryffindors into trouble all the time. When a bad situation starts to feel exciting, that's a Gryffindor feeling. When you're making decisions that you know you probably shouldn't be, but you feel like you're living the good life, that's a Gryffindor feeling. When you feel like your outlandish idea is the right way to solve a problem, even though there are far more qualified people to solve that problem around you, that's a f in Gryffindor feel. Sometimes we suck. I'm sorry. Come on, guys. We all know it's true about us. We're reckless sometimes. Oh, I forgot one. When you pull off a stunt that you know is dangerous and definitely wrong and against the law, but you expect some sort of triumphant reception when you return, that is the only Gryffindor feeling. Sometimes it is exhausting being in the same house as Harry Potter. Okay, how's about we list all of the bad decisions that Harry and Ron make in just these few pages, yeah? Bad decision number one. Not just waiting at the station outside the platform. I mean, there are parents on the platform after 11 a.m. when the train leaves every single year. Surely they will start flowing out of the platform in a few minutes. Bad decision number two! Not just waiting in the car. I mean, if you're really concerned about drawing attention, just go sit in the car. It's a Fort Anglia. No one's gonna notice it. Bad decision number three! Thinking that driving the car won't attract more attention. I mean, Harry, just some consistency, please. Just be consistent. Bad decision number four! Driving and flying the car while being underage wizards. Bad decision number five! Driving and flying the car while being underage drivers. Bad decision number Six. Not realizing the car could falter and become visible. Bad decision number seven. Not realizing the car could falter and fall from the sky. I mean, neither of them is very good at levitation charms. Bad decision number eight. Thinking they could just land in front of Hogwarts and everything would be fine. I mean, really, what did they think was going to happen? Well done, boys. I no longer hate the both of you. Five billion points for Gryffindor. Shut up, Granger! Bad decision number nine. Not coming up with a plan to return the car so that Ron's parents wouldn't notice. Bad decision number ten. Stopping to watch the sorting instead of rushing up to their common room or literally anywhere else that they could lay low for a while. Like, seriously, just hide somewhere until the morning and then when breakfast rolls around just be like, What? Flying car? Missed the train? No, we were here the whole time. Bad decision number 11. Not considering the damage that they could do to Mr. Weasley's career. Bad decision number 12. Talking back to Snape. Like, just always a bad idea in general. 12 bad decisions. That is literally a bad decision more than once every other page. Real bad time to be a Gryffindor. Okay, so I know I said Snape was right, but he's not like right per se, but he is technically right. Let's get into it. I support McGonagall's decision not to expel them 100%. I'm just gonna throw that out there. She could tell that the boys had learned their lesson, and she knew that detention and angry families would be enough punishment. But for Harry, he technically should have had his wand snapped. Earlier in the book, magic was performed in his vicinity, and the ministry freaked out. They sent him a letter and said, Hey kid, one more time and you're done -zo. His letter from the ministry said that if any more magic was performed around him, he could be expelled. Also, that any actions that could expose magic to muggles was considered a very serious offense. As far as the ministry's tracking can tell, Harry just straight up did all of that. So, technically, Snape was not wrong in thinking they should be expelled. But like, practically speaking, yeah, he was kind of wrong. But 
It was pretty cool, though. Damn it, Gryffindor! And that's it for today's topic. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments. Was Snape right? Should Harry have been expelled? How about Ron, too? And now it's time for parenting with... Can you imagine what Molly and Arthur must have gone through in those few minutes immediately after they realized what had happened? Just like, sheer terror. Were they kidnapped? Are they okay? Where did the car go? How are we gonna find out what happened? What should we do? Just a few of the questions that run through my head as a parent reading this. Like, their youngest son and their favorite non-family son are suddenly missing, their car is gone, and they have absolutely no way of finding out what is going on or if they are okay. Yeah, I mean, they probably put two and two together, but still, they're both children. They could have died. They could have been seen! Sorry, it went full on Mrs. Weasley there. <sighs> I just imagine that those like 10 hours or however long it takes the train to get there were just like the worst hours of their life. Until they got that letter from McGonagall, they were probably just sitting there dying, not knowing what was going on. These chapters keep getting harder and harder for me to read now that I have my own kid! Margo, listen to me. Don't ever steal a flying car, okay? Also, if you get lost or stuck or separated from us, just stay where you are, find someone who is in charge, tell them your situation, and then stay very close to where you were. Don't try to solve that problem for yourself. Ugh, Gryffindor! And that's all for Parenting With... Okay, guys, this week's question, I want to know what form of muggle transportation would you like to make magical? I am thinking that flying roller skates would be kind of awesome, <laughs> but let me know what you guys would do in the comments. And that's it for this week's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, please drop a thumbs up on it. If you want to follow along, please subscribe, and after you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single chapter, and then please make sure you share this video with everyone you know, or pick and choose your favorite one of those things to do, and then do it. Your assignment for next week is chapter 6, that's Gildor Lockhart. We will be trying to figure out why the hell Dumbledore hired that man. So make sure you guys read that by next Tuesday, and until then, happy reading. Knox!